We've seen some examples of how to use RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, to let your large language models have access to a body of documents that you wanted to be able to answer questions about or make use of as it works. We use ChromaDB, which is a open source embeddings database to make this data available. But we ran ChromaDB just directly as like a Python library, like in completely in, in process so that it would load all the data, all the documents in, process them. And then when you wanted to run it again, you have to load them all again, again. So we can treat this more like a traditional database where we launch ChromaDB, it's running, we load the data in and we don't have to keep reloading it because we save the binary sort of state of that database. So let's see how we can do this. I'm gonna do this all in Colab. This is not really that useful for Colab. Colab, you'd probably want to more so keep it like we had been doing. Maybe you'd wanna save the binary state of it so you don't have to reload the documents every single time. But this would, this would be more if you're setting this up in sort of a production system where you wanted to actually have the database up and running. We are going to use OpenAI for this, so you do need an OpenAI key, like I've mentioned in the beginning of this course. I recommend storing that OpenAI key in the keys section of Colab, and this is just everything being installed. ChromaDB, Langchain, everything that we have need of for this particular part. So the embeddings database that we're gonna do, uh, we've used this data set before in this course. I give you five big text files with a bunch of biographies of people. Like you can see Alina Martinez here. She's a seasoned robotics engineer at Future Tech, et cetera, et cetera. <coughs> she is not a real person. So this is, uh, this lets us make sure that it's answering it from RAG and not pulling some famous person from the foundation database. The foundation model, I should say. And here's all of the BIOS files that I provide. These are all text files. These are just something that I generated using ChatGPT, quite honestly. And they're sitting up on my, my data server for this course. We're gonna load them into the ChromaDB database. We've done this before, so this is nothing new. You're gonna basically just loop over all the URLs and chunk them, create the documents, and then once you've created all of that, you're, you're simply going to put that into a, an embeddings database and load it into, into ChromaDB. Now I commented it out here, but it's actually, I have it, basically down here, but you'll notice the way that we did this before, if you're just running as a library, you just pass it the docs and the embedding function, whereas here we're passing the docs, the embedding function, but we're also giving it a directory. And this is a local directory where it's going to store sort of the binary state of that database. And then when we get the database back, we can see that it is, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a Chroma um, database with default location, all, all of that. If you look at that binary, that the path that you gave it, where it can store the binary state, you can see, I mean, that looks like a GUID as, as the file name. And then you can see that Chroma is actually using SQLite, which is a very popular SQL type Python database. So it's, it's really just an embeddings layer on top of SQLite, which is, which is kind of interesting. Now, if you restart your instance and everything's out of memory, you can then reload the database from disk. So you create it like this and you pass it, you're not passing at the docs notice, you're just passing at the directory and the embedding function and that's enough. It's gonna now reload from that binary database. It's not gonna to have to go through and rechunk everything and go through, go through all that fun, fun stuff. So now we can prove that we can do the usual sort of Q and A on it. So I ask what company does Elena Martinez work for and it, it knows how to answer that just, just fine. This is still running completely just as an in-memory Python library. If you want to run it as a server, 
what you can do is this is actually the command to start up Chroma DB. This is a Unix command. You'll notice the little and sign. That means run it in the background. Now that we have that, we can open up a client for it and basically say, okay, 127.001, that's the local machine, port 8000. And we open up a connection to the, to the low-level database that is, that is running there. And now everything else looks really pretty much the same and we can just query it and we get the same result. Except that this time it was querying the database as a running server. And that could be off on a very powerful machine. Maybe you have a whole bunch of clients coming, coming into it. Thank you for watching this video. And if this was useful, please give me a like. Consider subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss out all of the other things that I do for artificial intelligence and now Gen AI.